everyone, and welcome back to Tracy Trans Gaming. Today we are playing Planet Base. Planet Base is one of my favorite games, and I do highly recommend it, especially if you are a sim builder, like if you like SimCity or games on that sort of vein. This is taking up care of a colony in space, and I love space. So this actually is really fun to play. But it's, the best way to describe it is it's like a curveball being thrown at you at 90 miles per hour. Just when you think you are stable, something can go wrong. You always got to be careful of how much population you're getting. And you got to be careful of who you are putting into your colony and how much you have functioning. One great example is, let's say you make a bunch of robots and these robots start breaking down. They let's say their entire goal was pretty much feeding the machines with food. You may think that it's not that important thing to do, then all of a sudden your colony starts to starve, and there's a lot of different things that can go wrong. There's a lot of different things that you have to take into account and figure out. So it's not exactly the hardest game when you figure things out, and it does have a few things that irk me a little bit. But they are developing and putting new things out continuously. One thing that I would like to see is the ability to designate people's jobs and keep them working on those jobs. Because I would have all my biologists working on a farm and a trading ship lands. Everybody starts going to the trading ship to drop off supplies and crops are no longer growing and... Your colony goes from excellent status to poor status because things are not being upkept. I believe that's part of the game itself, but still I'd like to see that being a function, being able to tell robots this is what robots can do, this is what people can do. So when you got a mine, you can be able to designate robots and people will get less hurt. Another thing I would like to see added to this game, and my biggest thing that I'd like to see, is designating storage. Having one storage for medicinal and this sort of thing and being able to tick what can go into a storage and what not can go into it or having things ticked of what goes into the storage and what can go in other places is something that I would really like to see added to this game. So those are my two primary things that I would like to see added to have a little bit more of control. I'm not looking for individual control because it turns almost impossible when you get 300 400 colonists it becomes a little overbearing and another thing that was slightly annoying but it is a game mechanic i tried two other times to make a video about this game both times the terrain was too small to expand so i believe that i just ran into bad luck so let's Without any further ado, start a new game and see what happens. I am choosing Class D because it is a great representation of the game. It is also one of the easier planets, so I don't have to run into a ton of problems while trying to show you everything. Hopefully. So, we're going to start with Class D. This means nothing, at least currently. You can spin this around all you want, and the only thing that it does is change your location. I'd like to be able to see it so that zones can exist, and I wouldn't be surprised if they were to add something like that in the future, where you can be able to scan over it and it'll tell you this area is flat, or this area has a lot of hills, or this area has this, or this area has that. But where it sits currently, this really doesn't have any bearing on where things go. So pretty much you just have to shoot and hope that you get a good spot. Now, base D2, this is where you would put your base name in. And I think I'm just going to leave it as it is. Because I don't really see a, name, need, uh, a need to change that right now. So let's start game. Another thing I like about this game that I give it a lot of high praise for, I run a medium computer. I don't run high end, and my computer isn't exactly low end. This computer, this game would probably be very effective for low-end or high-end or medium-end PCs because I really don't have any problems 
playing this game whatsoever. It looks great, it functions great, and you can pretty much play it on the highest settings on a medium PC. One of these days in the description I may put in what sort of uh, hardware I am running so that people can be able to have a gist of what exactly I am having on my computer. I do plan on upgrading it in the future, and with that I can be able to get bigger and better games on here. But for the moment, this is pretty much what I have to work with. And... do I like this, or do I not like this? Okay, this doesn't look too bad. It has some expansion potential. It's not as open as I would like it to be. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to start by rotating my screen like this, and I'm going to have to build way back there. This is going to be a weird one. I like building it so it's a little bit more curved around, because then people can be able to get to things easier. But I guess I have to work with what I have. First things first, I need to start with an airlock. I start with an airlock because I can be able to know where I'm going to put my mine, where I'm going to put my landing pad, and where I'm going to put my other functional pieces. So first I start with an airlock, and then I choose the largest solar panel because I made the mistake of trying to do smaller solar panels and stuff to try to save power. But the problem is, is you end up using so many repair kits that it's just unreal. One solar panel pretty much is equal to two or three large solar, I mean small, actually more like three small solar panels, and it costs about the same amount. Now, a lot of people prefer to just use a small water generator. I like using a larger one because I try going for larger farms right off the bat. I gotta be very conscious though on how many um, biologists I have, so I'm not overkilling my biologists by giving them too much work to do. And oxygen, of course. Small oxygen generator to start. And we are going to let them build this. So let's fast forward this. Fast forwarding feature in this game is a must. Without fast forward, you'd be sitting there forever. Okay. And everybody stopped moving. Okay. So we got this up. And we got that up. Now we have oxygen. This is your first basic need. Without oxygen, these guys will literally die within three minutes of gameplay. It's very, very tight at the very beginning of the game. It pretty much lets you know, hey, we are no nonsense, get stuff right or die. <laughs> so next things next, I want to build a canteen. And with the canteen, I also want beds. But the thing about beds and dorms is they are classified as an M. When you connect this, if you notice I've been connecting everything by, you know, one thing on top of another thing on top of another thing. Unfortunately, with a dorm, you can't connect anything else to it. You can connect other tracks to it, or connections to it, like I can do this. Well, for some reason it's not allowing me to. But, no, actually I don't think you can. But, that is one of the things, is, is dorms and hospitals both have this in connection thing that is very... You gotta be very careful of where you put them or you're going to run out of space. Like if I put it right here at the end of my base, I'd have to find some way to build around it in both ways. And that really constricts my forward movement of where I want this base to go. I do apologize, I got a little bit of a sore throat this morning, so I'll probably be clearing my throat a little bit more than usual. Now, the reason why I'm doing the canteen and the dorm first is because this gives them water and this gives them sleep. That is very, very, very important at the start of the game. If your character, if your peoples are too tired, they won't be as effective working and they won't be as effective They'll just start passing out in random locations, and that's really something you don't want to have happen. This is how you access the adding menu. 
but you can only add something when it's connected. So you gotta make sure that you're mindful about this. And I'm gonna give them a small table, water fountain, a meal maker, which is very important. And I'm gonna give them a TV because that'll help them with their mood. Their mood is very important. If they are very low on their mood, they won't do any work either. Pretty much one of the things I've learned about this game is if they have something yellow over their head, a little yellow triangle thingy with something inside of it, they will still do work. However, if it turns orange, they will not work at all, or they will only work like 50%. And if it turns red, they're pretty much on screw you mode, I don't want to do a damn thing. Okay, now, slow down the time. I'm trying to take this really, really slow because I want to make sure that I am doing this correctly. And if you hold shift, this is something else that's kind of empty. If you hold shift and click, it allows you to keep the same object. Okay, so there's this. This is the dorms and this is the cafeteria or the canteen, as it's called. Canteen. It's not a cafeteria, it's a canteen, but I'm probably going to call it cafeteria anyway. I have a bad habit of that. Now, the next thing I like to build, which is... Not a lot of people do it, but I prefer to do it, just because. I'm going to get the hospital out of the way right now, because I've learned at the very beginning of the game, somebody gets injured really, really quickly. Especially if I put the mine down. If I plop the mine down, it's almost a tutorial injury. One of your workers will be injured, and that's going to cripple your further gameplay for a while, because that means you'll be functioning off of only one or two um, workers. Now, how am I looking for supplies? Oh, I still got plenty of metals and stuff to work with. Now, the next thing that we gotta do is, is we gotta start focusing on getting their food supply up. And with their food supply, we can start be able to process things. We need to get a processing plant, a food plant, a laboratory, and a mine. And then this base will be pretty much self-sufficient. And then I prefer to take it a little bit slower, so I might just play for a while and jump cut when I actually start getting enough supplies, or I might just let it play through. I haven't made up my mind yet. All I know is I'm going to record for a while and see exactly what happens. Either that, or as soon as I reach that point, we'll probably call it the end of the episode, but it's still a ways away from that. Okay, so now we got the medical bay up. We only need really one bed for right now. These medical cabinets come in useful. Don't think about just filling up your medical bay with just beds. What the medical cabinet is useful for is it stores medical supplies. And the reason why storing medical supplies is extremely useful is there's going to be, I guess you can call them mini quests or mini missions throughout the game, where you can be able to, you can be able to assist other players, or not players, I wish you could be able to assist other players. This would be really cool as multiplayer. But you, when you put a starport down, you will get the ability to... A starport and a satellite, you'd be able to get the ability to allow trout visitors to come to your colony. With your visitors, you are going to... So a lot of them are going to need medical assistance and other such things. Right now we are nowhere near that mark, so I'm not that worried about it. But the way I like to build it, well, with visitors comes, of course, hostile threat. So you got to be very, very concerned about this as well. There's a lot of things to be concerned about visitors. So the way I would like to build it is, is I would get the airlock, starport. Then I would get a security desk with only security, no scope monitoring or, you know, um, no monitoring devices, just all security desks. And then cram as many security personnel in there as possible. And then further up the chain, I would build probably a storage so that when traders do come they can have an easy route in and out and off the storage i'd build the medical so that when people come and land and they need assistance they can be able to go and immediately get medical assistance if need be. 
and then I would build probably a bar or something because limiting my base of the traffic from a lot of random people really helps a lot from confusing what you are trying to do. Now, as you notice, I built a medium-sized farm. The reason why is I personally like to build all of this. I like putting all of this... Oh, well, you can't really see it. But there is pea pad, rice pad, potato pad, wheat pad, maize pad. They got all of these different type of pads. And when you are focusing on your people and you are focusing on their hunger, you cannot just give them basic meals. You need to give them a mesh up of meats and you need to give them different types of vegetables and other such things. And that would be classified as a balanced diet. Actually, the best way to describe this is, is to click on the meal maker itself and hit the question mark. Okay. The full list of recipes, any three different vegetables, any three different vegetables equals salad. And then it goes through each one of these other ones. And mixed meals restore morale as well as nutrition levels and prevent malnutrition. This is actually very, very important because when you get malnutrition on your people, they can only be cured by medical. And that actually is very, very hindering. So next thing I want to build is I want to get up a lab because I want to get, come on, lock into place. When it locks into place, that means I can have more than one walkway. I'm not really worried about it, but as you can see, I can now click, I can now create a lot walkway here and a walkway there. That is actually kind of important. Now I'm putting up a lab because I want to get food as quick as, quick as possible going through here. And I'm going to make some basic ones. Tomato. I'm going to do mushroom. Medical. Medical plants are extremely useful. There's actually a way to play this game. I have not done it yet that you can actually play straight up medical and you can make tons of medical supplies and sell them off because medical supplies are actually worth a lot. Oh, recycle the colony ship, yes. Recycling the colony ship gives you even more supplies. As you can see, I ran out of metal. So if I click this, and then if you click this little button right here, now I have 17 metal at my disposal, 16 bioplastic at my disposal, and this is pretty much a secondary menu. It's this little arrow right here. It took me forever and a day to figure that out. This is your daylight, or yeah, this will tell you day and night. When it looks like little stars, it'll let you know that it's nighttime. And when it has a sunlight thing, that means it's daytime. And this tells you how much daylight you actually have left. This is your wind power, your people, and your robots. Robots are extremely, are extremely useful. Okay, now back to this. I'm going to need rice because it's extremely fast making a bioplastic and a wheat pad. And what else do I want to make? Maze. I'm going to do only half for right now because I don't want to overburden my biologist. This might be enough. This might be a overburden in, its, in the first place, but we'll see exactly what happens. Go, my little robots. Go. Somebody needs to go over here and build this. You, fix this, please. Please. Just a little tap. Just a little nudge. Fix, fix, fix. Thank you. Okay, now with this, I'm gonna put one tissue synthesizer in. And I'm going to preemptively build the medical. I'm not gonna exactly use it for right now. As soon as it gets built, I'm gonna tick that off so that I don't have people being distracted on making this. Oh, there is another useful function to this game that sort of helps dedicate, designate where people go. If you click on a structure, they got this little up arrow. They have this little up arrow. If you click this up arrow, it makes it so that this becomes a focus of construction or a focus of manufacture. So when I get like a mine built or 
a manufacturing factory belt, I can be able to designate, like, as you can see, they went straight to building that. All right, tissue synthesizer, and I want beef today. I like to build three tissue synth synthesizers per farm. At least that's the way I personally run it. Because then I can be able to get chicken, beef, and pork, which adds a little bit of a um, variety, if you will, to their eating habits. So they're not just eating the same thing over and over and over again. Anything to make sure they do not get malnutrition. All right, now next, since this is looking under pretty decent construction, I'm going to put in a processing plant. And the processing plant is going to be very important because this is another major step to self-sufficiency. I'm also going to put in the mine because this is the metal half. So now that's metal, this gives me bioplastic, and then this gives me the ability of processing them. I still have enough spare parts, so I don't have to worry about that quite yet. Let me take a look and see what my 15 and 6. I might have enough to build a small storage so I can have, make sure things don't rot. Things do have a decay. When they're inside storage, they do not get decay. And that's extremely handy. Speed this up a little bit. Zoom. And there's the mine. And because I want people focusing on constructing other things right now and not collecting minerals, I'm going to disable the mine. And to disable it, you just take this right here. Well, you can't really see it, but it's right next to the recycle sign. They have an enable or disable structure. You would click that and it would disable the structure. I do apologize about that. I keep on forgetting my camera's in the way. It's like right here. <laughs> Hint resources. Yes, I know. Okay. Now I am going to check available resources. Stats. I got six available resources still left over. So, with this, I am going to add a bioplastic maker and one metal maker. And this will give me self-sufficiency. These guys really need to focus on this, so I'm going to actually designate that as a focus point. <sighs> but now, we should start getting the ability of creating food, and we should have the ability to create metals, and spares. Spares are going to be next. I just need to make sure that I have everything else set up first. Let me double check my... Okay, status is excellent. Good. I do not have any spare metal. Um, no spare bioplastics. Which means I can't build any further. Which means I can't build what I want to build with that. However, I am going to designate that as a must. Now, at the very beginning of the game, what I'll do is, is I will juggle this. I will turn it up, turn it up to high, let this fill up, and you'll notice that in front of the mine, you'll get like one to two stacks of ore. When I start getting all this filled with ore, I'll disable this, and I'll let them work on it on uh, the factory instead. Because this is run by workers, and this, until I can get drill bots, is also run by workers. So I need to make sure that both of these structures are balanced with each other. That's another major part of the game is distributing your labor force and figuring out exactly where you want things to go. 
so I'm going to let this run a little bit and we mostly have the basics down. Let's check our people's happiness again. It's all the way maxed. So we can be able to, yes, we have our dorm. We have our cafeteria, our medical, our laboratories. This is actually going to get shut down for right now. And then we have, oh, we got a broken robot. That's not any good. Oh, no, that's a broken machine. Bringing that up so that it's more important and that people work on that a little bit quicker. This can be brought down again. Ooh. Well, they're working on it anyways. And food is being produced, so that's good. Let's check to see how the food production for the colony is going. Click on that. And then there's like a charts button. It's F3. But it's also on this list, which you cannot see. It's an arrow pointing up with a chart thingy on the bottom. When you click on that, it'll let you know exactly what's being produced. My meats are not being produced at all. But I believe that's because that's broken, but it's now getting fixed. And my vegetables are actually pretty hot. Meals are going down, but that's kind of to be expected because so many people are eating and the food is cycling so fast. All right. So, now they're transferring all the items to medical. That's also very, very important and needs to be done. I mean, not medical, to storage. Storage. Because if these items sit here, like this, you see how it has a condition bar? If this goes all the way down to nothing, this will actually go away and break apart. Some items break apart faster than others, and the last thing I need is for all of these pieces to literally be non-existent anymore. Oh, how many metal do I have spare? One, two, three, four. Only four. If I can get one more piece of metal, I can be able to make a star part. Or not a star part. Um, a landing pad. Which I'm actually kind of tempted to do. I haven't made up my mind yet. Because if I make a landing pad, I can be able to bring in... Uh-oh. That's something else that needs to eventually be made, is a security desk. Right now, I have no ability to stop people from getting hurt. This is your security concert control. So when I build a security desk, I can be able to put it on yellow alert. Everybody will go inside the building. And everybody will be safe. But until then, let's weather out this storm. I really hope everybody gives, is everybody, everybody stays okay over this one. I'm almost tempted on just shutting and locking these gates. If I knew that this was coming, I would have done so. Ooh, you're gonna break down. Go, go. Okay. Storm is over. Looks like everything is still decent. Make this high priority again. I'm gonna just make this of this high priority, then they can be able to upkeep with that. It'll sort of de detract, distract the biologist from running off and collecting goods when they should actually be focusing on this. And right now it looks like they are mostly just transporting stuff. Okay, let's take a look at the front end of the mine. I got one piece of ore. It's not enough for me to be majorly concerned about at this very moment. Okay. Let's get them stable, shall we? And then we could probably call this an episode. First things first is I want them to pick up all of this and bring it inside and 
fill up the storage. Speaking of which, ooh. I should have probably went for a larger storage. I just know I didn't have the resources to do so. Oh yes, and this is done for free. That does not take up spare parts when you when they fix robots and stuff. So that's actually very, very grateful. Making more meats, clicking on the meal machine. Ooh, five meals have been made. Salad, 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 salad. All salads. My people are rabbits! Oh, come on. Somebody fix the mushroom farm. We need mushy room. all of this gets pulled inside is the moment everything stays stable and also when they bring everything inside these guys will be officially will be officially idle they'll have nothing really to do I mean they'll still do stuff but they'll go to the mine or they'll start working on the processor but this is probably one of the more annoying parts of starting out this game is they are going to naturally move any spare materials from here all the way to here so it's going to take a while. I mean, I could have built the storage right up here in the front, but you gotta work. But you have to worry about the important things first. So I don't really have the ability to put my storage immediately up front. Like that. Oh yes, and if you remember, I was talking about people who attacking your um, base. That does not actually happen until later. I think it's like after a hundred people or fifty people or something like that. So, right here at the very beginning of the game, when you've only got seven people, you don't really have to worry about that too much. So, I don't have to worry about building that security desk row and getting everything defended. And it also is mostly when you build the starport, too. So, it's a cross between the starport and a number of people that you obtain. Alright. Why is nobody working on the mushroom? Oh, that's because everybody's busy still carrying stuff inside. And it looks like I'm still containing myself kind of very decently with power. Let's take a look at this. Power grid. Power 32, zero. It's eating some, but I'm producing a lot, but I've produced a lot more than what it's devouring. Oxygen is seven out of 20. I might do more oxygen. With oxygen, there's two things to worry about. One. It's oxygen for the number of people that you have, but also your oxygen is for space of the building. Excuse me. So if I have this with the dorm, with the, with this, all stacked, all stacked on top of each other, that leads to a little bit of a problem because they start getting stacked on top of each other and more and more people are going to be in those areas, there's going to be a lack of oxygen. I don't know exactly how the game reads lack of oxygen, if it's a number of people per area or what, but I do know that you will have a massive lack of oxygen and people start suffocating in your own base, even though it states that there's enough oxygen to support everybody. And it's even taking care of the metals well. Well, everybody. I do believe that this was a very successful start to Planet Base. We got everything that is necessary and we have everything in order. We've got people bringing in stuff. We got people taking out. So, well, everything's coming in, nothing's going out. We got our happiness up to, well, it's good now, but I bet you 10 to 1 it'll go up higher because people are going to be able to start focusing on their daily tasks instead of carrying stuff inside all day long. So, we should pro okay. Alright, good. I'm going to end this episode here. First, I'm going to save the game, save 17. And we will come back to this on part 2.
thank you for watching and I hope that you are enjoying the channel so far and hope to see you around. Have a good day and thank you for stopping by.